Many blessings. Uh, welcome to this brief interpretation of the astrological fate of the USA, a torch of hope in the elections of 2020. This is uh, going to be a focus on Donald Trump's astrological chart, as well as Joe Biden's astrological chart, both uh, some of their natal positions and their transits and progressions, their cycles, the forecasting for election day and beyond. So this is an element of uh, a workshop that I gave uh, during uh, the last week of September in 2020. And we're going to focus specifically in this excerpt on the astrology of both the candidates and how it shapes up. Uh, so here we go. This is also not a, a partisan or a polarizing type of uh, a webinar here. I just want to show you some of the big symbols coming up and you know paint the archetypes of astrology across the spectrum of how they may show up in in more of their shadow expressions or darker expressions and more of their light so some of the challenges coming up for each of the candidates as well as some of the the higher side potentials um so whether you like either candidate or not that's not really uh my focus here my focus is to just show you how the archetypes are playing out and what the cycles are speaking of that we really want to pay attention to uh, during this time. So if you do want to learn a bit more about the US chart, um, the cycles that the US chart is going through, a bit more about Inauguration Day, um, the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction in Aquarius, the Pluto return for the country of US, um, you can check out the video linked below. It's a three-hour class all about the U.S. elections and the astrological faith of the U.S. Let's get into Donald Trump's chart here. So you're going to see the natal chart here. And I'm using the whole sign house system. The whole sign house system creates one sign for each house. So we have a Leo rising here on the left side of the chart. And one of the most important things we're going to look at is we're going to look at the transits and the progressions to uh, this birth chart here. And it's very, very significant to note that this is one of the most important, powerful, intense years for Donald Trump, as you can imagine, because he's experiencing something very rare. And he has something very rare in his chart. And I'm gonna show you it here on his transits and progressions. So progressions are a kind of predictive tool used by astrologers that represent one day for one year of life. So if you're 50 years old, We'll look at the chart after 50 days. The progressions are symbolized here in the second um, wheel that you're going to see here. And then the third wheel on the very edge of this chart is the transits or the cycles for election day. So we have the, the progressions, which I put out to November 24th, so about three weeks after the elections, and then the transits, which are coming right on election day here. Now, before I dive into Donald Trump's chart, I do want to stress that um, for everyone who's watching this before the elections that um, in my other talk, I mentioned that more than likely we're not going to know the election results um, for, for probably many weeks, if not even months afterward. Um, one of the most important factors of this election season is that the planet Mercury is changing direction on the day of the U.S. elections, November 3rd. The last time that happened was in 2000. We know that that was when uh, the whole uh, you know, play with the Electoral College uh, in the US happened uh, between uh, Al Gore and George w, w. Bush. And we didn't know for many weeks uh, who won the election. And it was, it was quite an intense scene and you know, very controversial. Um, we expect something very similar to play out this year. Um, the same kind of scenario where election day, Mercury is changing directions. Mercury rules um, things like the post office and ballots and the information that we have, the communication. He was the messenger god, the god of the throat chakra, communication. So we could expect that there's going to be some really chaotic, uh, crazy communications going on, especially in the buildup to the elections as Mercury uh, through the month of October is opposite Uranus, bringing a lot of uncertainty, surprise, wildness, uh, shocking communications, um, uncertainty maybe with the ballots. Um, you know, Trump has said this is going to be rigged. 
Um, you know, there's going to be a lot more of that kind of rhetoric going on. And we have three uh, debates. So there's going to be um, probably a lot of shocking news um, over uh, the month of October as we head into the elections. Now, we also have a full moon coming the days before. I talk a bit more about this in my other uh, lecture, but the, the Halloween full moon is going to be very uh, intense and impactful as well and probably bring a lot of crazy, exciting, uncertain, wild energy to us, unexpected Uranian impulses, maybe even some revolutionary energy. So um, when we look at some of this in Donald Trump's chart, the first thing we have to notice is that on the day of the elections, um, and, and we have a 5 p.m. time of the day of the elections, but it doesn't really matter what time, because again, um, the whole day people are, are voting and, and in the buildup, they're sending in absentee ballots. But I want you to notice that Donald Trump is experiencing something that's uh, called the nodal, uh, the nodal return, and it's actually an eclipse return for him. And if you look at the uh, 11th house here, and I'm going to stop sharing the screen so I could use my, my arrow here so you could see a little bit more clearly. But right here is his sun and Uranus and north node. Um, he was born with that here. And then the moon and the south node are right here. When the moon and the sun are very close to the nodes of the moon, which is the path of the sun and the moon crossing, the moon does that going south and it does it going north, the south node, the north node of the moon. That's called an eclipse. We have two eclipses usually a year, sometimes three, um, two eclipse windows. Solar and lunar are two weeks apart from each other. Well, Donald Trump happened to be born during a solar uh, lunar eclipse, uh, which is a, a super full moon type of energy. And this is probably not surprising to a lot of us, but um, that, that really amplifies our whole life path. You know, being born at a full moon is a very strong energy, but being born in an eclipse is, uh, you know, has a lot of destiny to it. It also has a lot of karma to it. Um, so karma being a very significant theme in, in Donald Trump's chart, it even comes up with one of his asteroids, which I'll mention in a bit. But let's look at this right here. The moon is on his south node in Sagittarius, um, and the, the sun and Uranus are on his north node in Gemini. Now, um, the north node in the sky, the eclipses in the sky, are in Gemini and Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is the sign of inspiration and teaching and travel and foreign cultures. But it's also a sign that can relate to um, over-exaggerated behavior, um, dogmatism, and, um, you know, uh, sometimes a very, very uh, overconfident energy. Um, self-righteous energy. And that's the shadow of this, the south node and the moon in Sagittarius. That's the dark side. Um, the north node and the sun in Gemini, you know, Gemini is the shapeshifter. Gemini is the chameleon, can play many different roles and wear many masks. And um, all of us are learning how to do that right now. Um, we're learning how to be curious, to, to approach life with beginner's mind. Um, now, that energy, which is increasing on the planet, that's what the North Node represents. It represents an increase um, uh, where destiny, where evolution is unfolding and where we're hungry for new experiences. So we're all hungry to learn, to be educated right now. Um, but we have to bring the wisdom and the truth and the meaning and, and the spiritual seeking of Sagittarius. Now, um, in Donald Trump, Trump's chart, um, you know, Gemini has also showed up as being the businessman, the negotiator, somebody who can see... Um, and use language in a way um, to, to create the story that he wants to sell to the world, whether you buy the story or not. And he's done that in his career in business and also in politics. And that is, that is the Gemini energy. Now, Gemini is also known as uh, a, a, con artist, a con artist and a thief. And uh, we don't know really what happened in the 2016 elections fully. We do know there's uh, some things about Moscow and Russia that are, are complicated. There's, a, there's an asteroid in Donald Trump's chart that's very significant called Moskva, Moskva, which is based off of Moscow. It's very significant in his chart. And we do think that that, that has played a role and it may play a role again in this election. Um, so that's very significant. But what is really important is that he's experiencing the eclipse, returning exactly to where it was when he was born. That right there could be a very, very strong signature for a re-election. Um, now, there is, um, there's a lot more to say with that, 
there's a, a, a major chaos factor going on in this chart, which is the planet Uranus being hit by the North Node. But not only that, when we look at the cycles going out after the election day, we know that we have two eclipses coming. And those eclipses are going to land at the eighth degree of Gemini. That's the solar uh, lunar eclipse. That's happening, yeah, at uh, November 30th. And then we have a solar eclipse that's happening on December 14th at the 23rd degree of Gemini, uh, Sagittarius, sorry, Sagittarius. So Gemini, Sagittarius. And if you see what's happening with those degrees, it's very significant, is that um, the, the solar eclipse, 23 uh, Sagittarius, is exactly connected to the moon, the south node, the sun, the Uranus, the north node, everything from uh, Donald Trump's eclipse. And what that says is that, what it suggests is that maybe we don't even know the results of this until December 14th, which happens to be the day um, where the electoral college representatives in the US have to make their final decisions. That is very, very important. Um, that day is going to be significant, and, and we might not know anything until even that point. Um, does that mean it goes well for Donald Trump? Maybe it does. It's very, very hard to say. Um, but we know that um, this is extremely significant. We know that there's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of uncertainty. Um, you know, with Uranus involved, there can be a lot of rallying of people. Um, so very, very strong. Now, um, if you see that this part of the chart right here, Venus and Saturn are in Cancer in his chart, and they are being hit by this big triple conjunction we have in the sky, Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn, that are opposite these points of the chart. Oppositions can be tense. They can bring conflict. They can bring, again, oppositional or enemy-like relationship. Um, that is very important. Um, the law may be opposed to um, the 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 self-sovereign law that Donald Trump wants to promote in, in his life at this time. He has said that he will um, likely not transition peacefully, um, that he will not concede easily, again, promoting that um, the, the elections will be rigged. Um, so we could see that happening here. We could see that there could even be some kinds of uh, criminal energy going on with Pluto involved. Pluto rules, rules the shadow and the shades. Venus opposite Pluto could attract type of criminal energy, uh, dark energy, um, people that really don't like him as well, and uh, even the death threats and these types of things could be very intense. Um, and, and again, Jupiter could bring a, an over uh, confidence and, and some dogmatism to his perspectives as well, um, a, a sense of undying faith as well. Um, so this is very, very strong. Um, and also, there's kind of never enough with this energy, which actually happens to be, um, I, I believe, the title or, or, or main theme of, of Mary Trump's book about uh, the, the, the Trump family. So um, there is a, a very intense, dramatic component going on here. And um, this could be, uh, you know, something that could be, um, I mean, Trump thrives off of intensity. This is very intense, so this could help him, but it's also um, something that could bring a block, a constriction with Saturn opposite his Saturn. Um, you know, it could uh, prevent him from the office that he wants to hold, and it could make law, you know, prevent him from doing that. Um, but one of the things is that in the U.S., we don't really have um, a precedent for a president uh, to prevent um, you know, prevent them from uh, continuing to stay in office because, you know, if, if they don't leave, then, then what? Um, that, that's called a coup, right? When you, when you have a, a president that won't leave, um, it could get very messy. Um, and so you do see that Mars is rising in his chart, meaning it's moving towards his area of career, um, ruled by uh, Taurus right here. And uh, that's going to get stronger and stronger um, as we go towards election, uh, inauguration day in, in January 20th of 2021. And, uh, and this puts Mars, the planet of war and aggression, conflict, defensiveness, also leadership. Um, it puts it in the, the, the area of the chart that has a lot of power, that has a lot of reputation, profession, visibility, 
Mars is very strong at the top of the chart. So Mar he has that Martian energy that's, that's rising. That could also bring martial law from a president. Um, so this is potentially quite dangerous, uh, you know, combination here with, with Mars. You could also see that Mars um, is going, um, going direct after a two month retrograde, right about 12 days after the election or uh, 10 days after the election on November 13th. And when he does that, again, 15 Aries, you could see that that is putting his, uh, that's putting Mars sort of between his Mercury and his Saturn. And that's gonna give him a lot of aggressive words, fighting words, um, combative, competitive energy. Um, Mars will square Saturn. And again, that could bring, um, you know, tr troubles with the law and, um, you know, uh, but also it could, it could prevent him, Mars Saturn, from um, achieving what he wants to do, his ambitions. Um, that doesn't bode as well for him with that. Mars will be moving forward at that point, um, not at the elections, but again, by the end of the year, Mars is in a square to his Saturn and Venus. And that could bring a sense that he can't really do what he wants to do. Look at Mars squaring his Venus, which is the ruler of his area of career ruled by Taurus. And so um, it could bring a lot of strife, a lot of tension, a lot of conflict. Um, but because it's the ruler of his career, that says that there could be a, a big fight for what he wants. And, um, and, and maybe, maybe a loss of that battle. Um, but I don't think he's gonna go down easily. Um, we don't see that very strong because you do have um, a, the chart of someone who was born with the planet, uh, the star Regulus on his rising sign. It was born, uh, he was born right when uh, Uranus, uh, sorry, Regulus was at 29 degrees of Leo, which is his ascendant. So uh, that was known as the, the, the king star. When Regulus was rising or on the midheaven, the angle of career, we would see that that would often connote someone who would be the king of the culture. This is in the ancient traditions, in uh, the medieval times, in the Renaissance times. Um, but he also has Mars with his, uh, with his ascendant. And uh, that's more of the warrior king then, right? Mars with Regulus and the ascendant. Not only that, but the asteroid America, which there's an asteroid named America, is right here at 28 Leo as well. You don't see it on the, the chart, but you got Mars to America and he's brought some Mars energy, right? Defensiveness, he's, he's really behind, you know, the, uh, the governors who put out um, troops on the street and, um, you know, get, martial law has been talked about quite a bit um, from, from Donald Trump. Um, he's, he's brought divisiveness to the country and, and that is a martial quality. Um, there is an aggressive energy here. And just think about uh, the fact that you have Regulus and America uh, very close here. And you think of the, the regla, the word regla means the, the, the rule of law um, over America. It's, it's a very fascinating symbology. Um, so uh, that part of the chart is, is not super strong with, with uh, the cycles right this second, but there's so many uh, other elements here that are, are very, very significant. Um, you know, and so his Jupiter is, uh, is also right here and Chiron is right here. And you could see that Mercury is, is going to be coming back when he changes direction, kind of close to his Jupiter, about eight degrees away. But that does say, you know, on that election day, there could be some, some positive energy with that, you know, uh, but it's a wide conjunction. So we're not really sure how much that will, you know, af affect him or not. Um, but uh, we, we can also see that Neptune, this is very significant. Neptune is right here in Pisces and Neptune is square. What we were talking about at the very beginning, the sun, Uranus, the nodes and the moon right here. Um, Neptune is squaring all of those parts of his chart. Now, Neptune can bring um, a, a mixed bag. Neptune is like every planet. Neptune is the dream, right? And Donald has his own version of the American dream that he promotes. Keep America great um, in, his, in his way. Um, his vision, you know, and, and 
is, is kind of being challenged in a big way right now. Vision is a, a Neptune thing. Neptune is also imagination. Ideally, it's a divine imagination, divinely inspired imagination. It's, um, it's a very creative planet. It's a very spiritual planet. It's a planet that dissolves boundaries. And the dis dissolution of boundaries is one of the challenges that's going on here because it is a T-square to his moon and his sun and his nodes. And this could mean that the shadows of Neptune can be a, a lot stronger, which are potentially deception, delusion. Um, and this brings up the theme of narcissism. Now, there's been many um, psychologists, uh, doctors that have talked about um, the fact that a, a, a psychotic or a narcissistic kind of uh, attitude, behavior, or condition can be very present in Donald Trump. Um, there's all the signs for that. Um, so that can also be the Neptune transit here where one can be very full of themselves in a way that um, can create a narcissistic attitude um, where the whole world can be sort of like wrapped up in their, their vision of themselves being the chosen one, which is a Neptune square to the sun. The idea of almost like a Messiah complex or a redeemer. Um, also just the sun on the North Node, we've come to, to be seen, to be recognized, to even think of ourselves as the light of the universe in some way, the sun. And um, that can be really exploded in a big way by the eclipse and by, by uh, this square from Neptune. Um, so um, the Neptune energy could, could also bring deception in terms of how, how the election results are handled um, or how, how it, it occurs in the first place. If we go back to Russia and we go back to um, how, how that might go down, there's a lot of ways that this Neptune energy can be very slippery and, um, and, and use the media um, to, to connote a story, Neptune, a mythology that you want people to believe. So we don't know. There's a lot of factors there, but that Neptune um, is, is very slippery. Um, and yeah, um, I'm just looking at some notes to see what else I wanted to talk about here. Um, this is uh, also, also note that Neptune is opposite his progressed moon. Progressed moon is the emotional body. Uh, it's what we feel now. It's the phase of our emotional life. And again, that creates a mutable T-square. A lot is changing every day with that. Um, his moods could be swinging from left to right to up and down. And um, it adds another flavor of, you know, like the, the questioning of what his service is to this country, Virgo, um, a Virgo progressed moon, um, and, um, and confusion. I mean, Neptune is the planet of confusion, dissolving boundaries. and so. Um, who he is, what his destiny is, what he wants to be, what his dream is for the country. Um, but it, it's, um, it's something that all of these things combined could definitely create a situation where we have a president that might lose the election, um, but not get out of the way in any way. In fact, his, his, his stance, um, his, his drive, his ego, the sun, um, and his emotional need to be right, the moon in Sagittarius, could uh, create a situation where he doesn't leave the office and create a situation in the US that is unprecedented and we, we don't really have um, an umpire to kind of kick him out. Um, so this could be quite a dangerous scene. Um, it's it's a, a, a very challenging type of moment. Um, one other thing to, to factor in is that Chiron is squaring his Mercury and that could bring a wound, uh, a lot of wounding words that he uses, but also wounding words towards him um, and you know significant that you have uh, Mercury being ruled uh, ruling the 11th house which is the area of, of allies and alliances uh, affiliations of people that we consider our, our team our cosmic tribe our friendships Chiron squaring the ruler of that could could bring um, you know a, a potential for those who were allies to no, no longer be allies um, especially when the democracy is threatened um, so that, that doesn't bode as well for him. It could be very challenging uh, in that situation. Um, and, you know, um, Mercury, when Mercury goes retrograde um, over the weeks before, Mercury squaring is Pluto, which again could uh, bring a lot of potentially underhanded behavior, um, you know, 
um, trying to skirt the law in some ways. And Mercury, again, when Mercury goes direct, he's uh, right here at 25 Libra. Over the next few weeks, Mercury will be in the square to, to his Pluto and then uh, squaring his Mars and ascendant and descendant, which could be very challenging again for him. Um, so, um, and, and create some challenges around his own sense of self-worth uh, because Mercury rules the second house as well as the 11th. Lots of factors here. I'm gonna move now uh, into talking about Joe Biden's chart. Here's Joe Biden's birth chart. And, uh, oh, I wanna share one last thing from uh, Donald Trump's chart, which is his uh, Sabian symbol for his, um, I'm gonna uh, pull up my notes here for his Sabian symbol, which um, if you don't know about the Sabian symbols, they are related to uh, the images for each degree of the zodiac. And the, the Sabian symbols are extremely um, interesting, insightful, enlightening. They're, they're an image um, and they've been used by astrologers for over 100 years. And I want to point out this symbol, which uh, is, is the symbol for his moon. This is very fascinating. And um, the, the, uh, the, the symbol is uh, a Chinese laundry that's connected to the 22nd degree of Sagittarius. We round up the Sabian symbols. And here it is, 21 Sag for the moon. So that becomes 22 Sag. Chinese laundry. I'm going to read you a little description about this and, and just we can meditate, contemplate this for a moment. But this is related to his emotional body, what triggers him, what, how he reacts, what he needs. But first of all, we know he has a strong connection with, uh, with, with China. Um, and uh, he actually has um, the, the asteroid China in a, a square to his Venus which is another whole story we could talk about. Um, but he doesn't like China very much. Um, there were sanctions against China a few years ago, economic sanctions. Uh, and uh, that relates to Venus, of course, who rules money. But, but this, this energy of China is all over his chart, even in the symbol of his moon uh, in Sagittarius, the sign of foreign cultures. So this symbol pictures a situation where people may not be taken seriously, expected to perform in a stereotypical way or are shut away because of their culture or language. Wow, that sounds like some of the racial issues he's had with uh, Mexicans, with, um, with, with Chinese, with Asian Americans that was spoken about back in, in uh, February uh, this year. Um, and, and this description is coming from the report of, of uh, Linda Hill, who's one of the experts on Sabian symbols. Um, in, in a Chinese laundry, people are often working very hard with little free time and expected to do the dirty work for others little or for little return. There can be a danger here as you may also have closed your mind to other options, opportunities, and possibilities. Now, the narrow mind can, be, uh, can happen a lot of times with a, a moon in Sagittarius where we have a certain um, kind of perspective on the world. And it's hard for us to leave that, that dogma. Um, be careful not to shut yourself away. This can also picture situations where people are working closely together, speaking the same language. Although here too, there can still be alienation and loneliness. All right, now here's the, the sort of the keywords. Restrictions of all kinds, laws and legislation based on social and racial equality. Huh. Issues of belonging, doing jobs because they should be done, efficient work practices. Now, he's definitely got a lot done in his life and his careers, um, having Trump Towers all over the world and, and, and what, how, the amount of money he's made. But um, the caution in the symbol is giving in to prejudice, self-inflicted inferiority, being used, issues of self-respect, confining stereotypes, money laundering, not taking seriously, feeling trapped. Well, I mean, a lot of people don't take him seriously. Uh, there's, you know, a lot of that going on. Uh, there's questions about, you know, where his money came from in some places, uh, you know, tax records, all of that. It's, it's a fascinating symbol, symbol connected to his moon. And it's a symbol that comes up uh, with the elections this year. So I wonder if this has to do with, you know, how uh, minorities affect the, the election, you know, um, or 
Hispanic, Chinese, Asian Americans, um, or, or how the Chinese government may be involved. Um, again, it's been a big year where China, uh, Wuhan, and COVID um, you know, has, has come into Donald Trump's rhetoric and life. So we wonder about that. And, and fascinating that this symbol will be hit by that eclipse that's coming December 14th, seemingly being affected and affecting the elections. So in the second part of the video, I'm going to talk about Joe Biden's uh, elections chart. <laughs> 